Hey gang, show buddy Platt, back with another Spirit Series video. Uh, today we're going to be wrapping up the Brandy section of the series by talking about the most popular, well-respected, highly revered style of Brandy, and that is Cognac. Uh, Cognac is a brandy named after the city of Cognac, France, that is in the department of Charente in France. Uh, it is produced from the wine that is created in the growing regions surrounding uh, cognac. Uh, the term cognac itself is protected and regulated by a French AOC. AOC, if you don't know, is Appellation Regina Controle. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, it's just a legal distinction of uh, for cognac, where it can be made, this, that, and the other. Um, we t briefly talked last video when we were comparing and contrasting cognac to Armagnac on what cognac is. Uh, cognac comes to us from the Uni Blanc grape. Uh, last week I talked about how Armagnac had several other grapes in the variety grapes in the mix, but that cognac was predominantly Uni Blanc. That is true, but technically there can be other grapes. Um, a couple of them that come to mind are Simeon and Columbard, but for the most part it comes from Uni Blanc, which is a very acidic grape. doesn't make a great wine, but makes a good spirit. Um, cognac is distilled two times in copper pot stills, uh, compared to the one time in a column still for Armagnac. Um, it's aged at least two years in French oak. The predominant oak is Limousine oak. We talked about Armagnac could also be aged in uh, locally grown Gascon oak. Um, the juice is pressed and then allowed to ferment two to three weeks. It's shorter than if we were making a traditional wine, but it's a lot longer than the fermentation process for whiskey, tequila, what have you. Um, they use uh, the yeast that's left on the skin of the grapes uh, to start fermentation or to, to do fermentation. Um, this is different from other spirit makers too because a lot of times they'll have a proprietary yeast that helps them achieve the taste that they're trying to hit um, because cognac's trying to play into that terroir uh, thing that so so allowing a the wild yeast it just kind of adds to that whole uh, terroir thing. Um, Check my notes real quick. Yep. Uh, after the two distillations, um, this goes in the bottle around 140 proof. It'll eventually get cut to 80 proof for the bottle, but that's what I'll go into the barrel as. Um, most cognacs are a blend. We talked about briefly with Armagnac that they have some vintage years. You won't see a 1983 Hennessy or a 1992 Cavassier or whatever. These are uh, tend to be blends. If you see an age statement on a bottle, it is the youngest spirit, or the term they use is O to V, in the blend. So you may, if it's a, a two-year-old cognac, there may be some two-year-old, but there may be some three and fours or whatever, but because that youngest is two, that's why it's labeled as such. And we'll review that real quick. Uh, the term VS uh, it means two years of aging. You may also see three stars, but VS is generally what you'll see. VSOP means minimum of four years of aging. XO, a minimum of six years of aging. Uh, if you see the term hors de age, that means beyond aged. Uh, for cognacs, it just means six years minimum. Uh, Armagnacs are ten years. If you do see it, though, it generally tends to be well past the six years. Just six years is that uh, minimum. Um, something unique about cognacs, even though we talked about the grape Uni Blanc being a poor wine producing grape, they still denote sub growing regions in the cognac area. Uh, they call them crews, there are six of them uh, Grand Champagne, Petit Champagne, Borderies, Finbois, Bonbois, and Bois de Terroir. Uh, the first two, Grand Champagne and Petit Champagne, those are conceptually the best crews. And, and if you have a cognac where all the juice uh, comes from the grapes produced in those two regions, you might see the term fine champagne on the bottle. It has nothing to do with the champagne region or the sparkling wine or anything like that. 
It's just the term they use for those two sub-growing regions. So don't get those two confused, even though they're both French and they're both protected term, AOC protected terms. Um, besides being a great spirit, uh, cognac is also the backbone to some great liqueurs. Uh, my personal favorite is Grand Marnier, uh, Domaine Canton, that's a uh, ginger liqueur, and uh, Chambord, just to name a few. Um, even though it's a brown spirit, usually brown spirits aren't as big in the mixology world as clear spirits, cognac still has its room there. Uh, several great cocktails. There's uh, the sidecar, of course, Between the Sheets, French Connection, uh, along with several others. Um, real quick before we wrap up, I do want to point out, Cognac, unlike other spirits where the master distiller is always kind of the face of the brand or, or is the great magician that makes this delicious spirit, Cognac really depends on the master blender uh, because... Again, the spirit itself, you know, we're coming from grapes. You could have fluctuation in gears, uh, you know, the terroir, the natural yeast. So it's hard to produce the exact same cognac, you know, year per year per year. The, the, you need then a blender because you still want to sell Hennessy. Well, this Hennessy tastes like Hennessy a year from now, five years from now, what have you. So that's where the master blender comes in, is they could they have a trained palate to where they know, all right, this is what Hennessy Cavassier should taste like, you know, the Cavassier VS. That's what this should taste like. And well this year's, you know, this three year old uh, cognac I have, well it's not as sweet as the others, but I remember this cognac from this year being a little sweeter, so we can and that's what they do. And it's, it's really a big deal in the cognac world. Uh, Hennessy has, has had the same family. I believe the name's Philo. I Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, for eight generations, the family has been the master blenders for Hennessy. That they just generation after generation pass this on. They do like a 10-year apprenticeship. It's pretty neat stuff. Uh, there's several videos here on YouTube if you want to check those out to learn about it. It really is uh, unique. Uh, the particular cognac we're going to try today is the Remy Martin VSOP. This is VSOP. We know it's aged at least four years. And on the bottle it says fine champagne cognac. So we know the grapes are coming from Grand Champagne and Petite Champagne, those two crews, or either or, or both. So, um, so we know that's where that's coming from. Uh, Remy Martin was founded in 1724, and the VSOP Remy Martin, which we're going to try, is the world's most popular VSOP cognac. So, let's give her a try. Alright, we've got a nice color here. Actually, got a color of a nice bourbon. Pleasant nose. Get a little, it's a lot of wood, got a, almost like a slight bit of citrus wood polish. Let's, all right, nice sweetness up front, hits the side. Um, I'm going to say medium plus finish, it, it still kind of continues to open. In my mouth, um, I get a, a little bit of almost spice. I think that may be some from the wood, a little bit. Um, body wise, medium body. Um, Yeah, overall, fairly nice. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not the biggest cognac guy. Um, boy, I'm, I'm really kind of flummoxed on what I, what I think I'm tasting. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I get a little... 
fruit, um, I'm going to say maybe a little darker fruit, um, maybe more toward a, a raspberry, darker berries, some. Um, get a little bit of that fruit with a little bit of toffee, maybe. Um, again, I'm getting I'm getting plenty of the wood in there, and you know. Wood, you can get vanilla, you can get toffee, you can get caramel, and some of that's uh, kind of blended in there. Neither one of them's coming out strongly, but it's kind of a blend of that. Overall, not bad. Um, definitely something I might sip in front of the fire later. Who knows? Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.